special relationships and holy relationships. You know, just, you know, what that means and and just what uh, like we were just talking about, yeah. like people saying we want a holy relationship. And we're going to, like I, I know you, Michelle, were saying that I want a holy relationship or we want to make this a holy relationship and how it's very clear like this whole world is a special relationship. You know, everything here is a special relationship, whether it's our environment or hot or cold, we have like this special, and how the Holy Spirit is it making us, you know, He's going to use our holy relate, use our special relationships to bring us to holiness. <coughs> like it's not making them holy. Thinking we got to be holy before we, you know, let's make this holy. So, you know, we're going to work with exactly what you believe with. So I thought that was really a really good one to go into. Yeah, it's it's also very, um, I'd say, more realistic to to start out. It's kind of like when you're working on something and you kind of have a baseline. Uh, if you just open your mind to the idea that this whole world is, this whole cosmos is a is a cosmos made and projected from specialness, and that that's the baseline, then you don't run into the trap of starting off to think that, okay, I, I somehow stumbled upon this holy relationship and it feels really good, but I don't, I, I want to be especially cautious and fearful and concerned to not blow it. Like, don't blow it. Reminds me of that, there's a scene in the movie Solaris uh, with George Clooney where he's recalling how he he met this, this woman um, and how, if, if during their first meeting, he, I think her name in the movie is Rhea, it's played by an Australian actress, and how in the movie he, he keeps seeing this woman Rhea across the, the room, and <coughs> he's thinking, he's like watching her, watching her, he's having a conversation with one of his buddies, but finally his, his buddy's aware that he's not paying any attention to him, He's got his eyes focused across the room on Rhea all the time, and so finally his friend says, "Go to her." <laughs> In other <laughs> words, we're not getting too far here. In this, uh, uh, and uh, and then George Clooney, you know, his friend says to George Clooney because he's a psychologist, uh, and uh, he says something like, "Maybe she could use a shrink," and and. Uh, friend says, don't we all need that? Because kind of we're all insane on this planet and everything. But then he goes over there, he starts talking, making a little small talk. And there's small talk, and there's small talk, and then finally she's just very still. And she just looks him in the eye and she just says, don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that's how kind of relationships Oh, there's a certain pressure to relationships if there's a, a connection or an attraction and a sense of flow there. It won't take long before this little voice in the mind comes in there and goes, don't blow it. Like, this could really be something good. This could be what you've been looking for. Don't blow it. But we've talked about in the, the group over there at the chapel today, it was more, no, you have to, you have, to have a little more humbleness just to start to come into this to say, that this whole cosmos was set up as a special relationship, as a God substitute, as a substitution for spirit. And so, the spirit is not in their mind saying, don't blow it. The spirit's like saying, okay, we can work with this, whatever you seem to be in. That the specialness gets projected out to, to climate and to food and to textures and sizes and shapes and colors. And uh, it's all flipped upside down so that it seems like you can have holiness or holy relationship as like a conscious goal, but without understanding the context of the world of specialness. And it's the same with relationships, you know, it's good to just be reminded of the context that, that they all start off special because that, that's by the, their very nature is what they are. 
And then as you keep practicing with the mind training and releasing the, the judgments, the expectation, the, the attachments, and so on and so forth, then they are, the mind is purified. It's not like the interpersonal relationship really is purified. It can seem like that. It becomes more and more like a reflection of the holiness. But yeah, that's the context. So it's, it's actually a very healthy context to see it in that way. We had that movie, The Time Traveler's Wife, in the last uh, retreat we did. And, uh, you know, one, the friend, the best friend's uh, partner is like, well, how come we never heard about this guy when she first, when they first hear about this guy? You, you're, you don't even date, and now you're talking about this guy with such love and everything. And, and the partner goes, give her a break, she's codependent like the rest of us. You know, it's like, it, that's one of those little lines that gets slipped in the movie, like, don't forget the context. The context is egoic. The context is specialness. The context is codependency. If you're swimming in a pool, it's a codependent pool, and you're asking the spirit to, like, lift you up, rise up out of the pool. But don't go thinking that you're swimming in the pool of the holy relationship and the pool just may go off a cliff and turn into Niagara Falls. And you may just, oh, there's so much in holiness. And then, shoo, I heard some noise. I said, what's that? It's like that movie, uh, what was it called? The, um, it was filmed down in South America, The, the Mission. You know, the, this giant, Iguazu Falls, you know, and the, the guy goes over the thing. You know, don't don't fool yourself into that you're floating along in the holiness, and then well, be careful. <laughs> you may go off off the edge. It's it's quite the opposite.